So I'm really pleased to be here with Levy Hansen from he's the content manager at Visit Fair Islands. Well, Levy, you've got a um, you've got a very high bar that you've set because the Fair Islands hit the world stage last year with uh, Google Sheep View and got a lot of recognition for this brilliant work. You were the man uh, behind it along with your team. Uh, tell us first of all, and maybe for people who still don't know about the Faroe Islands, tell us what the Faroe Islands is all about. Where is it? The Faroe Islands are a small uh, country of 18 islands in the North Atlantic Ocean, so between, uh, midway between Iceland, Norway and just north of Scotland. Uh, it's a very small country, 50,000 people, 80,000 sheep, um, and it's, uh, we're, we're a semi-autonomous country, so we come under the Danish crown, uh, so we belong to Denmark, but we're also an independent country, slightly. <laughs> and of course, that's part of uh, your challenge is communicating to people where you are, and yes. also, I, I guess access is also a, a challenge because it's maybe not on the European mainland, so it's somewhere that people really have to want to go to and make the effort to Exactly. Go. I mean, one of our main challenges uh, working with, within tourism in the Faroe Islands is, to, is just the fact that many people don't know that we actually exist. Uh, so, you know, our country is not, in, uh, not on many world maps. Uh, so that, you know, one of the, obviously the criteria for, for, for knowing or, or wanting to travel to a place is you have to know that it, that it exists. And uh, so that's our main challenge. And that's why Sheepy was really good because we could, we could sort of uh, reach loads of different people through media and, and first of all they could just hear about the Faroe Islands. And once they know about the Faroe Islands, then they can start understanding it more and, and looking at it more and then uh, you know, hopefully deciding to come and visit. So what was the balance between, I guess, a really, really good content idea and telling that in a really quirky way and then the kind of the, the media interest and the distribution of that? How did you kind of get that balance right when you did Sheep View? Well, first of all, it was, it, was, it was quite a risk as well because, I mean, we knew we had a really good idea. Uh, but we also knew that we, we didn't buy any media either. So we knew that, okay, we've done this really good idea and uh, or we at least think it's really good, but we have no idea if anyone else is, is going to think it's good. And, uh, and, but, but we believed in it enough and we, and we sort of put it out there and, and, uh, and we saw that the media loved it and, uh, and they just ran with it. So in that sense, it was, it, was, uh, it was risky in that sense, but we believed enough in it to, to take that risk. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Um, obviously, the, the, the content was fantastic, and you, you really built that uh, with a lot of personality, um, and you built something that was really quirky, perhaps partly because you also challenged Google in a way that most people wouldn't uh, maybe think of or dare to. Yeah. Um, how have you managed to kind of take from that success that you had with Google Sheep View, um, or Fair Islands Sheep View, yeah. I think is the correct term. Yeah. Um, how did you take that to the next level? Well, what we've done is, uh, y y like you say, Google and the Faroe Islands is very much a sort of David versus Goliath story. And, and we saw that with Sheepview, that worked really well. We, we heard from Google within the first 24 hours after we launched Sheepview. Uh, we heard from them, you know, they loved the idea, they really wanted to help us out, they wanted to come to the Faroe Islands, and, and so we, uh, we worked on that. And just last week, now the Faroe Islands are on Street View. So, so we, you know, our mission completed. Um, and then we looked at, well, we can use Google in, in, in other ways as well. The Faroese language is in Google Translate, for example. Uh, and so we thought, well, is there, is there a potential in that? Can we use that to, to our advantages in some way? Uh, and so we did the same thing. We, we created our own translating service, Faroe Islands Translate, where people can go on their website, uh, they write a word or a sentence that they'd like to be translated, they press the translate button, and a, a video translation is sent back to them by a live video translation. Uh, by a random Faroese volunteer that, uh, that wants to participate. So someone actually receives the, vi the video or the, the, text the text and then translates it and sends it back? Exactly. Wow, so yeah. how have you managed to even pull that together? You must have worked with uh, the whole Faroese community to, to actually get the support. We did, yeah, and, and we, we sent out press releases uh, to the media saying that, you know, if, if people want to volunteer, they want to be part of this, and we've, we've had a great response from, from the Faroese public. And those translations are put into a big public uh, exactly. database? Exactly, so they're on a video database that will be, they'll be on this website, people can use it. The campaign will, will run for another 10 days probably, a week to 10 days, but after that people will still be able to go on, write sentences and, and still see and here that the sentences that are already preloaded. That's brilliant. So, how many responses have you got so far? We have about twenty-seven thousand uh, new video translations on the on the site, 
uh, and we have about 1.5 million searches on the on the site. Yeah. So you're really crowdsourcing uh, <laughs> translation exactly. from real Faroese yes. people. Yeah. And how does that play into your bigger content work that you're doing at the Visit Faroe Islands? Uh, I mean, this this is obviously something that's uh, that's that we've worked a lot with this year. Um, and it's we we've used our, our our social media platforms obviously and our website and 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 our way of marketing uh, with together with um, with this Google uh, Faroe Islands Translate sorry um, and it's it's been uh, it's been really interesting to see the response that we've gotten from from Faroe Islands Translate on our different uh, platforms uh, it's it's worked really well because it's we like the idea it, it, it it's a, it's a great way to engage with people so we've had. Uh, requests from 175 different countries, so we know that we've reached a lot of different people in all over the world. Uh, which is also it goes back to sort of just letting people know that we actually exist. We're still sort of in that phase. We're still, you know, you, you still meet people even in sort of in, even in Europe and in Western Europe, uh, and you tell them about the Faroe Islands, and they say, "Oh, well, where is that? Well, I'm not sure." And and you say, "Well, it's, it's an hour, only an hour's flight from Edinburgh." Oh, wow! I didn't even know that. So so we're still at that stage where we need to. Share that, share that information with people. Yeah, and obviously you've built up a huge following on Instagram, yeah. and uh, I think you know a lot of bigger destinations look to you with envy for doing that. How have you managed to do that? What's what if, what's been your tactics there? We uh, we started off uh, with a with a real strategy from from the beginning. So uh, so we looked at uh, at working with influencers with Instagrammers, um, and we looked at a, at, a, at a certain style of content that we wanted to use. Um, so first of all, content had to be key, um, and then we've we've also I think we've we've gotten a hold of some really good influencers that that have come to the Faroe Islands and have had and have produced great content. Obviously, the Faroe Islands are a very visual country. Uh, you know, we have sort of very uh, dramatic landscapes and things like that. So in that sense, it's uh, it's uh, it, it works really well with Instagram, which is a very visual medium. So um, yeah. Where are you taking your content now um, with all of this uh, great work behind you? Um, we do you mean which platforms or yeah where, where are you what's the direction you're taking your content in what's the next steps for visit Fair Islands? Yeah um, we're working on uh, sort of in-house trying to use the content that we have and that we produce and that we get other people to produce to try and use that more effectively so how can we in a more effective way, gather all this content and use it and reuse it again and again and again in different ways. And we, we work a lot with uh, bloggers and, and Instagrammers and, and influencers of all sorts. Um, and we try to, to create something, not just say, right, come to the Faroe Islands and do what you want. Um, but we, we, we try to look at what, what type of content is, you know, do we want to, to have produced. Uh, they can come and do what they like, but we, and we, it's important for us to give them that freedom give them that sort of yeah that freedom to do what they like but it's also important that we get the content that we that we want and we're, and we're looking at using that content in better ways and sort of um, more effectively yeah so the next thing for you is really repurposing content and having a better kind of overall control over yes what what that brand is yeah. through the I think we found the, the style of content that we want uh, I think we found the we, we, we found what we like and what and what works really well for us um, so in that sense, we, we feel that that's uh, in place, yeah. but it's about sort of using it better. I think. Great. Well, I think everybody's watching you guys, so we're looking forward to seeing what comes next. Uh, Levi, thanks very much for sharing those insights with us.